Hey everyone! As promised, here's the WSTP tutorial video. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll have some knowledge of how to set up and make a Wolfram Link program in C++. So let's get to it. So the first thing to do would be to make a new C++ project. I'll be using Visual Studio 2017, because I have a Windows 10 desktop and that's what's pretty much available to me. So let me go ahead and start that up right now. And once that's loaded... Ah, and there we go. Alright, so the first thing to do would be to make an empty project. I'll be saving in this to the desktop here, but... Hmm, empty project... Let's browse and save that to the desktop as... Let's call this... OWSTP project. Mm -hmm. So, once that finishes loading, uh, I have some settings I like to set on a Visual Studio project just to keep things clean. So let me quickly do those. If you're interested, I can make another video. Okay, so I've set up the project how I like it now. Uh, rerouting all the jump data that Visual Studio uh, generates when compiling projects into a zdelete folder, and making the final binary show up in a binary folder. Uh, in addition, I've created an empty main.cpp, um, which you should do now. You can do that by right-click add new item if you need to. Um, so let's start. Uh, for this example, I'll be using the project that taught me this stuff, how to hook up a Wiimote using Wolfram Link. As such, I'll be using the popular We Yourself library created by gl.tter. I assume that's supposed to be Glitter, but since I'm not sure, I spelt it out. We Yourself has four libraries that are relevant, three header files and a CPP file. So let me go copy those over to my project. I'm just grabbing them from the master example, but these show up when you download them as well. So I'll be making these in a Z delete, in, in a, excuse me, a We Yourself subfolder just to keep things clean. Uh, in addition, uh, now that I've cleaned up the folder a bit, I can delete these files without worrying. Um, so in addition, let me also add them to the project. I'll do that inside a separate subfilter. So add filter, we, yourself, and then in that, add existing item, and then let's add the we yourself project files to the folder. There we go. So let's actually get to the core part of this video, WSTP. So WSTP has multiple steps uh, that it needs to work. Before we get into those specifically, um, let me do the uh, setup that we'll have to do so it doesn't confuse you later down the line. So you'll be importing their uh, libraries through header files and some linked libraries. Uh, so the official documentation tells you that you should put these in global include folders. I feel like that's bad practice. Um, maybe this is just me, but I don't feel like I want every project that I ever make in uh, on my computer to have the option of importing in uh, Mathematica libraries. So instead, I'll just be putting them in an include folder for my project. So let me go do that. They're located. Uh, uh, deep inside the bowels of program files, so follow along. So in my case, there uh, I have Wolfram installed to C program files, and we're not going to Mathematica or anything, we're technically going to this Wolfram Research subfolder here. So C program files, and I know I, I have a 64-bit computer like most people nowadays, but they're not located in x86, they're located in uh, the regular system, uh, in the regular program files. Mathematica. The official documentation still says 11.0. This will be different, of course, depending on what version of Mathematica you have installed. Then we go into System Files, Links, and then scroll all the way down to WSDP, Developer Kit. Um, so if you want a 32-bit edition, you go here. Otherwise, you go to the uh, x86-64 version. We'll be doing that. And so there's a lot of different folders here. There's some examples of how to 
used WTSP, some pre-built uh, example ETSIs, some documentation and the like. Um, this will be important in a minute, so uh, we'll keep that in mind. And then compiler editions. This is the folder we kind of care about. Uh, it has some example CMate uh, files if you want to try and set up a project that way, but since we're using, using Visual Studio, we don't really need to worry about all of that. In our case, we're interested in these two files, or I selected three, excuse me, this header file, and in our case, we're also interested in the .m, or not .m, excuse me, m version of WSTP 64i uh, m.lib. That is not a username anyone can be expected to remember normally, but there we are. Um, so let's go back to our project and let's put these in a WSTP folder just to keep things organized. So in this case, we don't want to add them to the project as direct files. Uh, instead, what we'll be doing is go to your project properties, make sure you're in all configurations. Um, do, 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 do. That's right, it's C, uh, configuration properties, C, C++, general, and then in additional include directories, we're going to be adding them to here. So that will be solution dir uh, WSTP. I'm pretty sure that should resolve to the right thing. Yep. Okay. So we want to do that but we're not just using an include directory. That will include the header file into the project. We also need to include the library. So in that case, what we need to do is, uh, so we go to linker input, edit, and then again, solution directory, so that it's all relative. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, oh, what does this evaluate to? We just say, hey, from our solution directory, we're going to go into the WSTP folder and include which one did we select it in? We selected that one. I'm just going to copy paste that name and then paste that here so I don't have to try and type that string again. And that will add that library to uh, all configurations. That is to say, uh, whether you're running into debug or release mode for your project. So now we can hit OK. We can also hit apply, but we don't have any other settings we want to set right now. Um, so yeah. There's a couple of other settings that we'll end up setting up later on, but those are the important ones for now. We now have the uh, WSTP library uh, included in our project. If you want to see proof of that, if we start typing include, we can already see, oh, WSTP.h. That's exactly what I want. And while we're at it, why not just add the standard int main return zero? We'll be changing that in a few minutes. We now have a project theoretically ready to develop Wolfram Link. Is that it? Are we good to go? Is, is it that simple? Not, not quite. Uh, theoretically, what we could do is we could absolutely just go look through the header and write all this uh, packet sending code ourselves. They have a ton of functions available for you to do that. And, uh, with trial and error, we could probably figure that all out, but that is way more complicated than it needs to be, and uh, the smart people over at Wolfram figured that, uh, knew that. So they created uh, a way to sort of externalize all of this uh, in what's known as a template file. These template files, by convention suffixed as .tm, are read by this special ETC, um, specifically, since I have it open, they're read by the special ETC WS Prep and automatically generate and they will automatically generate for you C++ code that you can just include into your project excuse me um, and it will work it'll it'll be sort of ready so we can use that automatically generated C++ code to produce our program and you'll see what I mean as we actually end up doing it but what does a template file even look like well truth be told they basically look like this. So you guys can see that? Yep. Alright. Well, they look pretty complicated, don't they? All sorts of different functions, and it doesn't really quite make sense. Um, but let me break it down for you. 
Essentially, a, a template file counts as a valid C++ file with some extra preprocessor uh, commands that turn into actual uh, C++ code. Uh, the most important of them are these, I think. Uh, begin, function, pattern, arguments, argument types, return type, and end. There's also evaluate, which is super useful for, you can probably begin to see it as, a, uh, as I scroll through this document. And I believe there's a few others, but they're a lot more specific. So this begin and end block specifies a WSTP function. That is to say, through the magic rule from link, these plots define functions that can be invoked from Mathematica. This line here defines what C++ method gets called when you invoke this function, and the pattern line says what, ma what is called on the Mathematica side. Um, the arguments functions, of course, tell you what it takes in, and the return type over here tells Mathematica what kind of data to expect when you invoke one of these functions. Because what it's doing is almost a sort of networking layer between your C++ program and the Mathematica kernel. So it needs to know what it's waiting for. So there's a lot of freedom on both these argument types and these uh, return types. Uh, not as much as you might think, but also more than is actually documented on their site, but I'll get into that in a sec. Um, that's enough fiddly diddly. Let's, let's write our own template file. So, since this is just an example, I'm not going to get super complicated here. I'm going to write a function that allows me to connect to a Wiimote, and will turn on all the LED lights on the remote when it connects. Then, it will make sure to turn them all off when we disconnect, through a different Mathematica function, of course. The LED turning on and off will be done through the Wii Yourself library, not through Mathematica or something, but it'll serve as an easy visual indicator when uh, we invoke the function through Mathematica that, hey, we're doing it right. Um, now, this isn't a tutorial on how to use the Wii Yourself C++ library, so I'm just going to begin. Um, but I hope that... Uh, you guys can follow along. Uh, it, it's it's not particularly complicated, which is why I'm choosing it as an example. So, just to make sure that we're using the library properly first, I'm going to, well, I'm just going to start by writing a Wii remote. Oh, I just realized my face is covering the code. You guys can't see that. Let me move my face over here, and hopefully that's more helpful, um, even if it means I'm kind of looking off into the distance. Um, so... Let me zoom in a bit on this. All right, so now we have our uh, Wiimote library and we can confirm that it's working properly. Uh, but uh, that's not why we're here. We're here for WSGP. So let's make a template file. So we can do this in Notepad or we can do this through Visual Studio just for sake of simplicity. I will do this through Visual Studio. Uh, actually, let's do that over here so we know where it's going. So, there we go, a text file, there we go. So let's call this uh, wstp.tm. Not the most inventive name, maybe, but I think it works for our purposes. <coughs> mm, excuse me. So, in any case, uh, what does a wstp file look like again? Uh, if you don't remember, well, it looks something like this. So we don't need any of this for now, even though it's useful. So we'll just start with a basic function. Uh, I'll type it out so that you guys can follow, but it'll be pretty simple. Begin, and yes, you need the extra col uh, colon afterwards, and end. All function definitions uh, start between those two. So then we say function, and what will the function be called? I think let's just call it something simple. Connect to Wiimote. Right? We don't need the parentheses, my apologies. And then we need a pattern. What is it going to look like in Mathematica? Well, I think let's just call it connect to Wiimote. I clearly cannot spell. What arguments does that pattern take? Well, uh, nothing. Well, what argument types are those nothings made of? 
parting the tights. Right? Well, uh, nothing. We're not taking in any arguments. We're just going to automatically connect to the first Wiimote we have. And, uh, what are we going to return if we connect successfully? Well, if we, uh, connect successfully, then we should, uh, let's send a message down to them, eh? Or down. Let's send a message up to Mathematica, right? Like, if we connect successfully, we want to, we want to send a string up to Mathematica that tells us, hey, you have connected successfully to Wiimote number one. So, unfortunately, we can't just return a string. Um, there's no return type string. In fact, it'll give you an error if you were to try and compile this. The reason for this is because of the way C++ works and that it needs to be able to dereference the pointer. Um, that is to say, you know, get rid of the string once it's sent it up. And due to the limitations of uh, how this preparsing works, it can't do that. So instead, we define ourselves as a return type manual. That is to say, we will be invoking the WSTP functions ourselves to return that, yes, you have successfully connected in a string. So let's go ahead and make that method. So a manual method. So what will happen when this function gets parsed is that it will look for a connect to Wiimote method that uh, of return type manual, that is to say void, that takes in zero arguments. So let's make that connect not kunet, connect to Wiimote that takes in nothing. Now, what are we going to do with this method? Well, a couple of things. First thing we need to do is actually connect to the Wiimote. So we can just kind of copy these, really, and just put that right here. But I think as a sort of looking forwards a few minutes, Let's actually move this Wiimote moat definition out here so that we're only setting the variable there. That way, when later we write a disconnect function, we can just simply see whether moat is uh, a null pointer or not. And if it's not, we can just invoke disconnect. So, well, we set moat and we try and connect. And then we don't need to sleep. But what we do need to do is then call a method that tells uh, Mathematica that, hey, we're sending a string up. We could send anything up. Uh, in this case, manual means that we can send up whatever kind of data we want, which is useful when we want to send up an array or uh, some kind of list when we don't know the size of the list or something like that. Um, the documentation in this case is actually pretty well written, so I encourage you to go check it out. Um, and then go poke through the WSTP header because there's a lot of methods there which are not on the documentation. Um, but the documentation is a good place to start for seeing what kind of things that you actually can send up. Uh, int32 list or stuff like that. But we're going to send up a string. To make all of our lives easier, I will uh, use the standard library string definition. So let me just go import that. Then let's say std string uh, str equals you have successfully connected and we actually want to tell it what number we've connected to um, I know we've hard-coded that as one but sort of as a look forward why not just do that so let's say str plus equals std to string of uh, one connected to Remote number and now we have our string. How do we send this up to Mathematica? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We've included the header, so all we have to do is WSTP whoops, not WSTP, WS string or I believe it's a send string Hmm. No, that's not it. Sorry, I'm kind of doing this off the wall, but uh, WS put string, I believe. Yes, that's what it is. WS put string, uh, and now it's asking for a 
something, an object of WS link. Thankfully, there's one sort of in the global space. Mathematica keeps uh, STD link uh, in the global space so that we always have access to whatever link we have up to Mathematica. So we just pass that in as a default argument and trust that it will be filled in by the time we get to this method. And now it's asking for const char s. Um, well, I like using std strain, but that doesn't mean that we need to go grab the first char. So let me just, whoops. I am terrible at typing today, I apologize. Anyways, so let's save. Does that just work? No, it doesn't actually, it's, it's not actually just that simple. What we need to do is we need to actually compile this template file into the actual C++ code that'll look for this. Then we need to make main uh, go ahead and uh, invoke the specific method it needs to invoke. Now, so what that means is that in the case of this template file, what we need to do is we need to pass it to WS prep. But I don't want to copy this ETC over to every project or anything, so instead I'm just going to copy the path to it. Let's uh, control s copy that. Then we go back to our project settings. So in build events, pre-build event, uh, that's configuration properties, um, we go over to command line, hit edit, and in quotes, we say, we paste that path, which is correct, and then say wsprep.yetc. And so the documentation tells you the exact format for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Uh, we called this wstp.tm. And we want to output that dash o to, let's say, um, wstp.cpp. Uh, I'm not sure this will work because we've got some header files, but let's see. Let's try that. So we apply that, and let's see for the neat little description so we can see it in the build events. Uh, building building WSTP file. Dot, dot, dot. It looked like it's doing something. All right. So let's try building this. What happens? Oh, no, that didn't work at all. Why did that not work? Ah, I forgot to close the quote. Ah, the bane of every... Uh, every project, you forget to close quotes where you need to. So close that quote, hit OK, apply that, and let's clean this solution, try and build it in. And that didn't work either, oh no. Ah, unknown keyword return. Huh. Ah, it should be called return type. And this is why you should check your videos before you actually make them. <laughs> well. Let's clean our solution again, just to be neat, and to try building. And, well, oh no, what happened? Why can't we do this? Oh no. Unknown external, oh my. Ah, that's what it is. We need to add an existing item. That is to say, we made this uh, wstp.cpp. We now need to add it to the project. And if we look here, you can see, oh, it was automatically produced by this program. And it's done a lot for us. And if we scroll through it, we see, wow, that's a lot of methods you wouldn't really think about. But, oh, what's this? Connect to Wemo? Wow, well, I wonder where they generated that from. And as you can see, it uh, maps through properly. So I encourage people to actually just kind of look through this. There's a lot of really weird and interesting things here. Um, one of the important things that I'll keep in mind is that uh, this is kind of what we want here. There's all sorts of different kinds of uh, WS mains. Um, I'm just going to use this one. This passes the arguments so um, into your main for you know command line arguments that get passed through. Whoops. So that's perfectly valid, and if we were to build that, that would still build, ignoring other errors that might be there. But yeah, no, see that that will build, and that will do nothing, of course. It'll it'll run, and then ah, well, it'll give us an error for a reason, um, saying that it can't find a dependent DLL. I will get to that in a second, but I'm making a point. So, what we want to do is tell uh, is want to pass these arguments down to uh, Wolfram Link, 
That's because when this program is invoked through Mathematica, through the install command, it will, uh, it'll pass down arguments automatically, and it, uh, Wolfram Lake needs to have access to those. So we can just simply say ws main argc argv, and, well, we can build our solution, and once that's done building, we'll succeed it, so we run it, and it tells us again, hey, we don't have this DLL, this WSTP to 64 i4.dll. Uh, Keen-eyed viewers might have noted uh, might have noted that we actually did have that DLL. It was sitting right here back when we were looking through our Mathematica folders for uh, all of these libraries. Why didn't I mention it then? You might wonder. Well, that's because I was kind of leaving it until now. So we take this DLL and we uh, copy it and we just kind of paste it right here, put it in our binary folder, and uh, let's try running it again. And it'll give us a math link. Now, I've never actually been able to get this working from this end. That is to say, just typing the link and then getting Mathematica to access it. So I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm going to hit cancel a couple of times, and it'll go, hey, well, we can't find a Mathematica link by the name nothing, and uh, we're just going to exit now. Thanks. And, uh, well, that's perfectly fine, because now I'm going to just make a new notebook and give it a second to load. I'm going to save this notebook right in the directory of this project. I'm not even going to do anything. I'm just going to save a notebook in uh, WSTP project right here and call it uh, example notebook. So the reason for this is simple. Uh, the, the way you invoke a Wolfram Link project is through the install function. The install function requires a file path. Uh, rather than just copy and paste the direct file path to here, I thought I'd get a little easy. So I'm just to say link equals new install file name join of a notebook directory. And then the etc we're trying to run is actually in the binary folder. So if we, uh, it'd be binary and then WSTP project underscore D dot uh, Let's just try running that. And the program's running and, well, Mathematica's flashing. Hey, we have a thing. We have a new link that's being shared. And how do we know that this worked? Well, if we start typing in connect to Wiimote, well, that didn't work. Ah, that's because we capitalized it, did we not? Connect to Wiimote. And look at that, we have a connect to Wiimote function. And let me see there. I can't, I don't think this will show up, but. Oh, well. Would you look at that? You have successfully connected to Wiimote number one. And I can confirm, folks, that uh, the lights are up on this Wiimote here. I don't know, I think my color balance is a bit too, uh, a bit too strong there to see the lights, but I can guarantee you that they do exist. Um, and how do we uh, how do we close this properly now? You might wonder. Well, it's actually kind of silly, but you just say uninstall and pass in that link object, which is why I stored it there. <laughs> and that closes it and makes connect to Wiimote not a valid function anymore. Easy peasy. So I'm gonna save that. And uh, unfortunately, the lights are still on. It's not that it's connected anymore, but we never actually told it to disconnect, so the Wiimote's still lost searching for that uh, program. So, as another example, let's write a disconnect function. Begin. Fun not begin -y. Function. Disconnect from Wiimote. And, folks, I think I will actually not send a string for this one. Uh, instead of sending a string on disconnect, let's uh, send an integer. Let's say that if it returns zero, it disconnected properly. But if it returns negative one, you were never connected in the first place and doesn't understand why you tried to disconnect. Just, just to vary things up. I think, uh, in practice, what I ended up doing, and what you probably would want to do is just say, hey, 
we disconnected any connected Wiimotes, or we disconnected the Wiimote, we tried to disconnect a Wiimote, or give a strange message, but just for the purposes of varying things up, let's do that. So we will actually say the return type of this is integer. And I think I spelled everything right. So what we can do is then we just say void or not void. We said that the return type of this is integer, meaning that it's going to look for an int disconnect from Wiimote, but we're still not taking any arguments, so that's okay. And then if moat is a null pointer, that is to say we never set it in the first place, uh, we're going to return negative one. You were never connected. Otherwise, it's going to just try and disconnect. And return zero. Now distant. I like to put comments, even if I'm the only one going to be reading these, just to have an idea of what this is going to do. So let's rebuild our solution. Um, and if we go look at WSDP um, and we scroll up a bit, we're going to see, well, if we scroll up more than just a bit, uh, if we scroll up a fair amount, actually. Uh, Disconnect from Wiimote is a thing, and you can see it takes it's a void that uh, returns an integer, and we fulfilled that right here, which is great. So now, if we go back to our uh, notebook and say install, well, connect from Wiimote is now a thing. Oh no. Why does that say no? I am, I actually have flying, I don't have four hundred. Ignore that. Okay. Hmm. I will look into that. <laughs> but for now, we uh, we tried connecting to the Wiimote. So now let's disconnect from Wiimote. And well, it returns zero. We were connected in the first place, and now we're not. So we've disconnected. And uh, I'm not sure y'all can see that, but those lights are certainly turned off when they were turned on before. So that worked. And uh, well, Let's try calling disconnect again. We're not, we shouldn't be connected anymore, so it's still returning zero. I don't know why it's still returning zero. Oh, because we forgot to set moat to null pointer, of course. Um, moat will never be null pointer, so instead what we want to do is say moat is null pointer. We want to dereference it so that this will actually ever happen. And then rebuild solution. So we start that up. Let's try calling disconnect from Wiimote even before. And as you can see, it goes negative one, which it picked up from here uh, because that implements this function. And you can kind of see this magic little function that's automatically generated for us, where it just calls that method and sends that up to us, which is kind of magical. And uh, well, there you have it, folks. That is a simple example of how to use WSTP to, well, write a function for Wolfram Link. Uh, I hope this is helpful. Um, if so, and if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment or email me or, or message me in whatever way uh, you want to. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching.